Hello and welcome, boys. I hope you're all doing great. On this video, I will probably have an editor working on this. So hopefully, uh, you know, if you guys enjoy this video, if he does some nice sh please throw it on down in the comments below. Let him know he's doing a great job. And uh, there we go. I just swore probably within the first minute of the video. So there goes my my beautiful monetization but you know it is what it is if you guys want to uh please definitely go over check out my patreon youtube ain't gonna be nice to me if i keep keep up with this you know sailor's mouth but i've been using hyperland i'm loving it as of lately it well I wouldn't say as of lately i've loved it since i've tried it but in this video i want to go over not just hyperland but why i use it um, my config, uh, how you can get my setup if you're interested, and also try to point out any resources that I may have if you want to reach out for help or anything like that. Uh, I am more than willing to discuss solutions, any issues you might encounter, which hopefully you don't. And I got to be honest, Hyperland is one of those things where it's rapidly evolving. So you may have a perfect time with no issues. You may have issues that get fixed very quickly. And then you may have issues that five different people tell you is simple to fix. It doesn't work. And then, you know, you stop trying. And then the next thing you try, the next time you pick it up, instantly works. Everything's fine. Never know. So let's go ahead into my config and actually show off how the syntax looks because that is one of the reasons that hyperland is really great the syntax is really easy to understand and the actual default config in these input general decoration sections actually have the links to the hyperland wiki page where you can go in and see the different options you have and examples and such for it. And I do recommend you actually have the Hyperland Wiki bookmarked. Do I actually have that up here in my stuff? I mean, I know no one's going to believe it, but I believe I actually replaced the first search query with Hyperland before I did work on my dot files. I probably overrid it, but whatever. Have the Hyperland Wiki saved which is pretty easy to do it's not difficult you you can go to hyperland's website also just so you know i do have my website up i should have linked it down below so you can also just go to zany.org and when you go here at the very bottom on my sidebar if you're on a phone the sidebar will come down here at the bottom so the raindrop icon is for hyperland that's kind of their logo so you can go here and this is Hyperland's website. And if you go to the install page, it's going to take you to the wiki or the install button it takes you to the wiki and you can go through here. The wiki is super great for Hyperland. Very much recommend it. Everything you need to know will be in here. The most important pages to keep in mind is the must have page. These dependencies here, you absolutely need. Absolutely. Like there's no debate about it. You need them. I'm trying to think, what's the other like really important one? Uncommon Tips and Tricks is a really good one to go to. Probably the FAQ here. Yeah, the FAQ is probably the other really important page to go and check around in. But in my config here, I do actually list the monitor configuration breakdown that's from the wiki. So you know how the monitor line is broken up and done and also the rotation numbers or shortcut values that you would put in after transform and i've got examples in here and these th this one is for my laptop to ensure it has one scaling because it tries to default to 1.25 time scaling and i just want one and then setting for my monitor to have it be on the left because automatically the default configuration puts in new monitors to the right. So I want to ensure that 
my vertical ultra wide is always on the left. So I put it at zero, zero, and then set the transform to the one, which is rotated 90 degrees vertically. So, and then I start up some applications. Paul Kit, absolutely need a D-Bus activation environment. Don't ask me about any particular details. I have no idea. All I know is I was told to put this in here. I put it in here and I've, I haven't had any issues with anything. So I keep it in here. Then I've got Hyperpaper, Dunst, Waybar. If you don't know what those are, Hyperpaper is a wallpaper setter specifically for Hyperland. And so that's how I get my wallpaper. The config is obviously in my DAW files. My wallpaper, just so you know, if you're like, ooh, nice wallpaper, hot stuff, I want, don't worry, bro, I got you. It's in my DAW files. If you go into dot config, there's literally a picture called wallpaper. Just grab that. That's my wallpaper. It's that simple. It is a very high resolution picture, so it should be able to render fine on quite literally any screen you throw at it so have fun then dunst is my notification manager that's how i get my notifications uh, let me go and run sys stats which is one of my scripts that i've got if i run that you'll see it pops up over here with a little little notification i can click to get rid of it but so that's how i get notifications very simple and then i got my way bar and I've got my workspaces up here. Um, and then if you're wondering what theme I'm using for my terminal, Vim, which my Vim RC is completely automated. It takes care of installing all that you need, all of that good stuff. You can find my Vim, all that stuff, obviously in my dot files. And also the theme that I'm using for GTK, QT, all my programs, everything, all of that's in my DAW files, and it's Dracula. If you didn't already know, it's a very popular color scheme. A lot of people use it. I'm not special using it. it it's a really great looking theme. Can't recommend it enough. The people behind it also pretty chill. They've ensured it's really easy to set up for pretty much anything out there. So you can theme pretty much anything in the world, Dracula. You can theme Blender, Godot, pretty much anything. You, you can theme Dracula. It's it's wild. So it's great. When it comes to the rest of my config here for Hyperland, I've got Clipboard, Hyper Desktop, which this goes through and ensures any other XDG portals are killed and then launches up the Hyperland one. And then obviously setting up my cursor, which I'm using the Google.blue cursor theme. That's, that's what I enjoy using. So when it comes to using the actual config Hyperland and a tiling window manager, if you're new to them, I do want you to understand you are probably going to be confused at first. Hyperland is and tiling window managers are a little bit different than what you're used to. So the way they're going to work default a lot, a lot of tilers are dynamic tilers. Hyperland is a dynamic tiler, which means it runs off of a layout for how it's going to display windows. So here, if I press mod enter, which is my shortcut for loading up kitty, my terminal, the screen's going to split. I can keep pressing it and it's going to go down into this little fib it's called a dwindle or a fibonacci layout where it kind of just spirals down in without any user input now if i kill all this and i go up here i can press mod enter and it's going to split up above if i move my cursor over here it's going to split there so i can come down here hit enter it's going to split on, even though I was down at the bottom, I'm still over towards the left side a little bit. So it's going to split over there. So it does actually work kind of how you would expect it to. Windows are going to load up in a dynamic layout, but also kind of influenced by your cursor position, which I, I honestly got to say, by default, I don't change any of the settings of how Hyperland handles stuff behind the scenes. 
I really just change its theming. So I have like animated borders. So like my, my border colors are 45 degree angles that rotate around. So it looks like it's spiraling colors, which it is, I mean, it is spiraling the colors, but it looks great. The animations I have beautiful, great. Could not suggest it enough. It's amazing. I have key binding set up for lowering the volume and kitty. Like I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. I've got my alternative browser, which is Amphora for Gemini. It's a Gemini browser, which is an all alternative to the web. Web search, which is the script I was showing earlier where I can search on different websites right on my desktop and it'll just open up a tab on the website with my search query, which is great. I use Firefox, my emoji selector, which I have brilliantly named emo, emo picker 9,000 time date. This is for taking screenshots grim here and lets you select on the screen where you want to take a screenshot. And then you got web cord, which I'll probably, I switch between WebCorn and Discord all the time. If you use OBS virtual camera, it doesn't matter to use WebCord because you can share your screen through your OBS virtual cam. But if you don't want to set up OBS virtual cam or don't know how to, WebCord will allow you to share your screen. Easy peasy. So just depends on what you want to do. Then, you know, just a whole bunch of other programs I've got. And then I also have it set up where I have key bindings, global key bindings set up for OBS studio. I can do things like hold alt and hit F1 and switch over here without my webcam switch to just us talking here back to the desktop. And I can do all of that with just alt F1, F2, F3. Now these global key bindings, just so you know, with the way they work, it's a little weird, what you need to do is go into OBS, configure your global keybinds, and then put them in your config. Now, let's say you wanted to use my keybindings here that I have for your OBS workspaces. You would need to come in to this config and comment out the OBS studio lines. You'll have to go back over into your OBS, change the settings, then come back uncomment the lines in this in this config and then you'll you'll be all set it's a little annoying having to having to like do that but i mean assuming you're not going to be changing your global key lines all the time or having to reset them up all the time it's fine it's not a big deal and then yeah, got all the other keybinds for closing windows, moving stuff. Resizing is very simple. I just hold down the mod key and right click and drag. I mean, you can do it a whole bunch of different other ways, but I don't know. That's how I like to do it. I have keybinds set up where I can move workspaces with H, J, K, and L up, down, left, and right, but mainly when it comes to moving workspaces in hyperland i gotta be honest normally i just grab it and move it because i don't know dragging the window around it looks it looks great in hyperland and obs i can tell the screen is screwed up i don't know why i guess maybe it has something to do with me switching around the camera but it's no longer recording the desktop but anyway I, I do enjoy actually clicking around and moving stuff with the animations look great. I don't, I don't actually use a lot of the shortcuts for moving around the windows in hyperland using hyperland has been a real great experience. The way it handles floating windows, pop-ups and stuff. It just, it's great. I, I really do love it. Gaming's been fine. It's been no real issue. I've been having a nice time. If OBS would play nice with Wayland and Hyperland, that would be nice. But I don't think that's a Hyperland issue. I have a feeling it's an OBS issue. But nevertheless, thank you guys for watching. It is very much appreciated. And also, if you want to check out my Hyperland config, 
please do. You can go check it out over on my DAW files. You can see all the scripts, all the stuff that I use. I hope you can use my template uh, slash dot files, which I have set up my dot files to be a template for you to build off of and take what I use and build into something that you you would want to use all the time. And hopefully it's a good starting point. Hopefully I've explained everything well. Please, if you've got any questions, if you feel like I left something out, please leave it down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to respond. Hopefully some of you will ask questions or answer things that I can pin comments that'll help out others. Thank you so much. I have really enjoyed using tiling window managers. They really have, I don't know, changed the way that I look at computers and have an appreciation for how you interact with one and also the kind of the enthusiasm you can have for using a computer when you've had a part in the way that everything works or looks it's really nice so thank you for listening to me ramble if you want to support me here on youtube like comment does actually help a ton and consider supporting me over on patreon i've got a whole bunch of great guys over there who support me which i'm actually going to go ahead and load up their names very fast because i need to i had it open before but issues so jonathan tgb papa smurf the linux cast and i got another guy in here but i'm not sure if i should say his name i'm just gonna do zach thank you very much thank everybody for watching thank everybody thank you all for watching i don't i don't know what's happening right now i'm broken okay i'm defective <laughs> have a good one i'll see you in the next video peace